we've looked at molecules that have one asymmetric center, but in reality, many molecules have more than one asymmetric center. We have a rule that allows us to guess how many total isomers are possible based on the number of stereocenters or asymmetric centers identified in the compound. For example, at the top left, we see the molecule 3-chloro-2-butanol. And labeled for us are the two asymmetric centers at carbon 2 bonded to carbon, well, I'm sorry, that would be carbon 3, carbon 3 bonded to chlorine, and also at carbon 2 bonded to OH are asymmetric centers. The maximum number of stereoisomers possible when there are n number of asymmetric centers is 2 to the power of n. So if we have two asymmetric centers, the total possible number of isomers is four. Some molecules have more than this. I have seen many that have at least three, sometimes even up to five. And that produces a lot of stereoisomers. So for example, two to the third would give us eight stereoisomers, and two to the fifth would give us 32, I think, 32. Uh, two to the fourth is 16, two to the, yeah, two to the fifth would give us 32 stereoisomers. So that is one way, and you will probably be asked to use this formula on the homework and on the test to determine the total number of stereoisomers possible based on the number of asymmetric centers you can identify. So, okay. Let's look at our four stereoisomers of 3-chloro-2-butanol. You may ask, well, how can we have four stereoisomers? We've only been talking about enantiomers in every asymmetric center um, of a molecule has an asymmetric center. It has its own orientation, and then there's a, it has an enantiomer with the same connectivity. And that's a pair. Enantiomers come in pairs, but because we have two asymmetric centers, each asymmetric center has a pair of enantiomers that are associated with that asymmetric center. So we end up with two pairs of enantiomers. If you look at the Fischer projection, one, this is one of the enantiomers that we will start with, and I've highlighted the um, groups bonded to the asymmetric carbon as yellow. So we can number the priority for these groups. The hydroxyl group has priority one. The carbon at the lower cross point is asymmetric center two, or I'm um, sorry, is um, priority two because of the chlorine and the methyl group. And asymmetric center 3 is the methyl group. If we draw an arrow, we can look at what the, uh, we can determine the configuration. Is it R or is it S? So we go from 1 to 2 and from 2 to 3. And that takes us clockwise. So we're going clockwise. Now, the lowest priority group, hydrogen, is on the horizontal bond. When hydrogen is on the horizontal bond, clockwise is S and counterclockwise is R. So this stereoisomer has the S configuration where this asymmetric center, the yellow asymmetric center, has the S configuration. Let's say um, I'm going to draw a yellow square around it because I have some other things that I want to show up in a minute. So the top asymmetric center across is an S configuration. Now we're going to look at the bottom asymmetric center that's bonded to chlorine.
Okay, so I've highlighted the atoms bonded to the second asymmetric center in green. Those are the four different groups. We have a chlorine group, a methyl group, the group represented by the top asymmetric center in yellow, and a hydrogen. The highest priority group is the chlorine. Next is the top asymmetric center, that's two, and then the methyl. I've drawn in the blue lines showing that this asymmetric center is going from one to two to three in a counterclockwise direction. That means that this bottom asymmetric center has a configuration of R. Once we have identified the configuration of the asymmetric centers on the Fisher diagram of one of the enantiomers, we will know the, the orientation of the asymmetric center at all of the other um, enantiomers. And so, and all of this four stereoisomers. So for example, when we have hydrogen on the top asymmetric center, when hydrogen is on the left and OH is on the right, the asymmetric center will be S configuration. So isomer three or stereoisomer, stereoisomer three has the S configuration at that top asymmetric center. Stereoisomer two has the reverse configuration. Instead of the hydrogen being on the left, it's on the right. That means that the configuration of the stereo center at the top is R and so on. So we can write out what the configuration of the stereo centers are after we've identified what they are in one of the stereoisomers. Once you know what one of the stereoisomers are on a Fisher, Fisher diagram, you can label all the other stereo centers. Okay, so we talked about the relationship of one to two and three to four. These are enantiomers. We could draw a mirror plane between the two. We could say that this blue line is the mirror, and one is the mirror image of two, and three is the mirror image of four. But what is the relationship of one to three, of one to four, of two to three, and two to four? They are all still stereoisomers, but we don't have a definition for that yet. We know what the definition of the enantiomers is, but we need a definition for stereoisomers that are not enantiomers. So that's what we're looking at here. Diastereomers is a term that we're going to apply to the relationship of a stereoisomer like one to a stereoisomer of three, where one and three are not mirror images, but they are still stereoisomers. They are called diastereomers. Okay, so diastereomers are stereoisomers that are not enantiomers. And I will tell you a definition that will help you identify when you have a diastereomer. But let's first identify which are diastereomers. One and three are diastereomers, and one and four are diastereomers. 2 and 3 in di are diastereomers, and 2 and 4 are diastereomers. So the definition of a diastereomer is that diastereomers have the same RS configuration at a minimum of one carbon, one asymmetric, one asymmetric carbon, and they have the same, a different, I'm, I apologize, okay. Da, da, da. Okay. So the diastereomers have the same RS configuration at a minimum of one asymmetric center, one carbon asymmetric center, and a different RS configuration at a minimum of one carbon asymmetric center. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that statement. Now I've added stars by the carbon to indicate that I mean an asymmetric center. All right. So looking at one and three, we have the same RS configuration shown by the blue highlight. So at the top asymmetric center, bonded to OH, 
we have the same configuration, H on the left and OH on the right in one. And in three, H on the left and OH on the right. They are the same. So they are both S. But, so they have the same RS configuration at a minimum of one carbon. Next, comparing one and three, the second stereo center have, has different configuration. The stereo center bonded in, uh, at, to chlorine at the bottom has hydrogen on the left and chlorine on the right. But in three, chlorine is on the left and hydrogen is on the right. So they have a different RS configuration at a minimum of one carbon. Same on the top, different on the bottom. That is a diastereomer. And so I've gone through and highlighted each stereo center that has the same configuration. Two and three are stereo centers having the same configuration at the OH. But a different, I'm sorry, two and four have the same configuration at the OH showing in the common yellow color and a different configuration at the chlorine carbon which is showing different colors, purple and green. Two and three are uh, diastereomers having this same configuration at the purple and a different configuration at the top, which is blue contrasting with yellow. One and four are diastereomers. They have the same color at the bottom asymmetric center, both green, and at the top we're comparing the top with H on the left to four, which has H on the right, and the colors differ. So they are diastereomers because they are the same at one car asymmetric carbon, but different at the other asymmetric carbon. Unlike enantiomers, diastereomers have different physical and chemical properties. So they'll the relationship of enantiomers one to two is that they have the same boiling point, the same melting point, and the same solubility. The relationship of one to four is that they do not have the same boiling point, they do not have the same melting point, and they do not have the same solubility. Diastereomers, for me, are much harder to view in the perspective formulas. This is the exact same molecule that we've just been looking at as the perspective formula, the erythroene antimers and the 3 oene antimers. Perspective formulas of the stereoisomers. This shows the staggered conformation rather than the Fischer projection. And you will, you will have these types of um, configurations come up. I probably will not ask diastereomer questions of molecules in the Fischer projections of molecules in the perspective projections. I will probably ask diastereomer questions with molecules that have the Fischer projection. Because looking at two stereo centers at the same time in one molecule in a perspective drawing can be very difficult. Nevertheless, on the ACS exam, it may come up. And in that case, you'll have to be able to identify the configuration of one asymmetric center that has hydrogen on a hashed wedge and possibly a second asymmetric center that does not have the lowest priority group on a hashed wedge. And you should be prepared and know all of the requirements of determining the configurations. So um, with hydrogen on the hatched wedge, I can either rotate the molecule or I can um, exchange the lowest, the hatched wedge chlorine with the um, solid wedge hydrogen, and then realize that whatever uh, I come up with R or S for the switch will be the opposite for this original molecule. If I do the rotation in my head, what happens is if I rotate around this bond, until hydrogen is in the back, 
The first rotation brings this carbon to the position where hydrogen is and chlorine um, onto this solid in-plane wedge. If I rotate it again, oh, I don't need to rotate it again. The first rotation brings this carbon onto the solid wedge, the hydrogen onto the hatched wedge, and chlorine onto this solid wedge. So then this would be chlorine, this would be the carbon, and, and the hydrogen would be over here. So if I did it that way, where this is the chlorine and this is the carbon, then I would have one, two, three. Anyways, okay, so if we rotate it, what we get is, and I'm, I'm going to be, um, I'm going to cheat, okay? So you don't always have to draw out the whole thing when you rotate it. You can assign colors like yellow, red, blue, and green. And then redraw the carbon in the new configuration. So what I've said is, if I rotate it until the hydrogen is at the back, the methyl group stays where it is. So blue stays where it is. Then the hatched wedge becomes hydrogen. green, this solid wedge becomes the yellow carbon, and the straight line to the side wedge becomes the chlorine in red. <sighs> Irritating. Okay. All right. So then we can label them with their Prior we already know the priorities. Chlorine is one, yellow is two, um, and blue is three. So now, just from the rotation, I can figure out the configuration without having to do the switch of the H and the CL. So that gives me a clockwise configuration of the asymmetric carbon bonded to chlorine as it is on a perspective drawing with the lowest priority group on the hatched wedge. And that means that this configuration is R. Okay? Then I can look at the yellow carbon, which already has hydrogen on the hatched wedge. OH is the number one priority. The R asymmetric carbon is the second priority. And the methyl group is the third priority. This is going counterclockwise. And so the configuration is S. Okay, looking at two asymmetric centers and four stereoisomers with a ring. The cis stereoisomers on a ring will be a pair of enantiomers and the trans stereoisomers of a ring will be a pair of enantiomers. If we define diastereomers as having one asymmetric carbon in the same and one different, we can highlight all of the stereocenters that are the same in one color. and the stereocenters that are different in another color. Yeah. So, if 
if I were to flip this over, I would have, well, I don't need to flip that one, okay, never mind. I'm going to flip the last one, this one. If I flip this one over, then I get bromine on a hatched wedge and methyl on a solid wedge. Just from turning it over. Okay, so then that tells me that this asymmetric center is the same as the yellow on the first uh, cis enantiomer. And so the cis enantiomer has diastereomers in the trans enantiomer. With one stereocenter the same for the first trans enantiomer and the second stereocenter, the yellow stereocenter the same for the second trans enantiomer. And we could do the same for the other enantiomer of the cis and show that both of the trans enantiomers are diastereomers of the second cis enantiomer. Identifying an asymmetric center in a ring can be tricky. There cannot be a plane of symmetry. And the asymmetric center must be attached to four different groups. What this means is that as you identify the stereocenter and you move from the asymmetric center all the way around to carbon five or carbon six. So if the asymmetric center were carbon one, when you do this test, as you move clockwise around the ring, the arrangement of bonds, the order in which the bonds appear, cannot be identical to the order in which the bonds appear as you move counterclockwise around the ring. So as I go from bromine to 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5, I encounter CH2, 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 CH with a um, CH3 offshoot followed by CH2. That is the picture as you go clockwise. As you go counterclockwise from the asymmetric center at bromine, what we encounter is CH2, CH bonded to CH3, then CH2, CH2, one, two, three, and CH2. Because the order in which the groups appear is not identical at this position and this position, That's probably the wrong order. Okay, second, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And this position, the asymmetric center, the, the carbon is an asymmetric center because they are two different groups in the way that they are written. They do not look identical at the second position as you move clock, the second position as you move clockwise is different from the second position as you move counterclockwise. And the fourth position as you move clockwise is different from the fourth position as you move counterclockwise. Therefore, the two groups are not identical. So, we have two asymmetric centers in this cyclohexane and four stereoisomers total.
because every time we have two asymmetric centers, we will have a total of four stereoisomers.